Hi, it's Paul from Model Builder International. Uh, don't forget, subscribe button is down there. You know what to do with that. And also click on the bell to get notified of the future videos. And those will be uh, reviews, builds, and giveaways. The next giveaway coming up is the end of October. I think Kenny's running that one. We're giving away three 170 second scale kits from Clearprop. But today we're going to talk about a brand new release from Flyhawk. This is their 1700th Scharnhorst. The Scharnhorst was the lead ship of her class, the Nasenau was her sister ship. Um, she was sometimes described as a battleship to sometimes a battle cruiser. Um, launched in 1935, completed in 1939. She was initially armed with three triple turrets with 11 inch guns in them. There were plans to replace these three turrets with three twin 15 inch turrets, although that never happened. Uh, Shanos and Nays now operated together for much of the early, early portion of the war, um, various raids into the Atlantic. Um, famously, uh, doing operations off Norway, the two ships engaged the battlecruiser HMS Renown and sank the aircraft carrier Glorious and her escort destroyers. Um, in that engagement, Scharnhorst achieved one of the longest range naval gunfire hits in history. In early 1942, um, the two ships found themselves in Brest, in France, and basically did the channel dash back to Germany. Uh, in early 1943, Scharnhorst joined Tirpitz in Norway and from there she went out to intercept a convoy in December 1943 and she was sunk on December 26, 1943 um, by HMS Duke of York and various cruisers and escorts. Only 36 men were rescued out of the crew of almost 2,000. Okay, so let's see what we got. Uh, FH 1148, uh, Scharnhorst 1943, that's the year she was sunk, full hull, 1700 scale. Uh, it says includes PE there. I'm expecting that, um, should we say a few parts of PE, not the full, a full set. I notice there's also FH 1148 S is available with the full upgrade um, photo etch inside, you know, several frets, brass barrels. Um, all that sort of stuff. So that's an option that's out there. And on the side of the box, this one is FH 1149, um, Nasenau 1940, obviously the sister ship, so it makes sense for them to um, release the Nasenau, um, should we say, close after this one. And there's nothing on the bottom, so let's open it up. Start with a picture of the box art. Uh, kind of makes, uh, looks a bit like um, when she was sunk in December 1943, way up um, in the north of Norway, winter time, pitch black, uh, flares from British ships. And on the back, um, basically a history of the ship, Kiel late 1935, um, and then a a quick story through to her demise. Flyhawk's instructions. This is what we got. Uh, single, oh, two sheets of paper. Um, in their usual layout, sort of long and tall. Um, lots and lots of frets. And then we'll go through these, not so much a step at a time, but we'll go through these, we'll have a look at what's in the box and see what's in there. Just going through it all. Seems pretty, pretty logical build sequence. Um, oops, we got there. So basically 16, 16 steps. Um, Paints named Mr. Hobby Tamiya, White Ensign, for reviews. Over the side we have paint chart. Obviously, this is her as she was, December 1943. Um, looks like there's a masking set in here somewhere to, to 
at least paint the areas where the swastikas would go. We'll see if there's any swastikas in here. And then building the building the two Arado 196s and paint, uh, painting schemes for those. Right, so let's just make a bit of space. Then we have all the frets are bagged. Let's put the frets in there. There's the hole, the metal plate, and then here, what is the, there's the photo etch, as I suspected it's not, um, obviously not a full photo etch, there's no railings, just a few parts there, um, looks like there's a, uh, a correction to the instructions there, um, yeah, just a typo. Replacing an O1 with a Q1 on the instructions. It's like the masking sheet there, decals. Ah, looks like you can make the swastikas. But I'll take photographs of these and you'll have a good look at them on the website if you want to see exactly what's there. So the whole, let's see what this looks like. As the usual, it's wrapped in was it basically like foam paper sort of thing, thin foam? Uh, a couple of elastic bands holding it together. So we have that's the deck. And then you have the choice, of course, of Full hull or waterline. Um, interestingly, the a different bow there, so I'm suspecting that the Nasenau in 1940 had a different bow, which I believe is right. They had um, like Atlantic clipper bows added later. Um, so. You need to see it, see a rough size of it. Put the deck on the top, roughly if I can. Yes, yeah, so basically that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, so the strakes on the bottom of the hole. The deck has planking detail. I don't know if they're going to release a, or somebody I assume will come up with uh, wooden decks. I haven't seen anything from Flyhawk to say that they're going to release a wooden deck yet, but I have seen um, pre-orders for uh, like the Photo Etch upgrade set that's going to come from Flyhawk. Uh, if you get the 1148 kit and you want to have the PE, that will be an option. So the deck looks very nice. Hull side, porthole details. Uh, looks really nicely done. You can feel the eyebrows over the portholes are there. As usual, the fly hook looks very nice. And it's obviously a plate you use, put the metal plate in there if you're just going to do a waterline version. So what I'll do is I'll open up these bags, we'll have a quick look at some of the parts before we go into detail and we go through the instructions. Okay, so here's all the sprues. Just have a quick look at them. Here's the biggest one of the lot. Uh, breakwater. Three propellers, uh, where the propellers attached to, fine attachment points as always from Flyhawk, uh, rudders, Ooh, quite nice. Now we get uh, two of these, with uh, life rafts, secondary armament. Two of these with the main turrets, so you actually end up with a spare 11 inch uh, triple turret. Um, so those are on there. And then we've got some smaller sprues with smaller details. 
There's the ship's boats again with attachment points at the bottom where nobody will ever see them. It's really good. Um, we got here, looks like some masts and uh, binnacles. I think there's searchlights hiding inside there. Then got some of the main superstructure. Yeah. Range finders. Again, main superstructure, top of the funnel. Um, yeah, superstructure stuff looks like building the funnel from multiple parts, perhaps. Oh no, that's down here. Here's that's the funnel. It's hollow, side molded. It's a pretty neat piece of work, actually. That funnel. And then a big piece of superstructure. And what else have we got? We have a couple of these with searchlights and other small parts. A couple of these with building the ship's boats. Again, the hull of the boat is the attachment point is at the bottom where nobody will ever see them. More superstructure parts. Oh, there's the there's the bow. There's another piece of superstructure. More ship's boats and torpedo tubes, secondary armament. So there's plenty there. So what I'll do is we'll go through the instructions, have a close-up look at some of the parts. I'll take photographs of everything, put those on the website so you have a close-up look at the parts. It's all on the website. Instructions will be on the website as well. And uh, photos of the decals, the photo edge and the mask. So everything you need, everything close-up looks will all be on the website. So anyway, enough waffle, uh, let's have a look at the instructions. Surprisingly there haven't been that many kits of the Scharnhorst in 1700th scale, a lot fewer than I was expecting to be honest. All we really have is the Tamiya kit and that itself dates back to 1975 and has been reboxed a couple of times. So we're um, very much overdue for a modern quality Scharnhorst kit. Okay so in the box um, we have 650 plastic parts, 37 frets, roughly, uh, 14 other bigger parts, two small P sheets with only 14 parts, decal sheet, metal plate, a masking sheet, two instructions sheet, and some background on the ship. So now we'll go through the 16 steps of the build. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I will show you close-ups of some of the uh, main parts. There's a whole heap of uh, close-up images on the website, the link for which is underneath this video. So, step one, we start off by drilling out some holes on the upper hole. And then step two, uh, putting together the secondary armament turrets, along with some of the anti-aircraft guns, drill out a few more holes on the main deck. And then we put the uh, deck onto the upper deck and then you have a choice of building either a waterline kit or a full hull kit. If you're going to go for the full hull uh, it's at this stage that you add the three propellers, two rudders. Step three we assemble the first of the uh, the main arm and turrets and um, there's a couple of parts to remove from the turret as well. So put that in place, add a brake water and add some small details on the forecastle. And then with step four, we're starting to build up superstructure. We start with building the forward range finder and the platform that it sits on and the supports that go underneath it. Basically the top of the forward superstructure really. Down to step five and we're putting details onto the, the main platform of that superstructure. Across to step six and we're adding um, basically a couple of big superstructure parts together, adding some more details to them. And this is the forward superstructure and the number two turret um, placement going together. Then down again, step seven, we're putting together um, another one of the, the main turrets. That's going to go on the part we used for step six. And basically put the, putting together the parts we built in steps four and five and six, putting them all together. Uh, we also put together a couple of uh, look like rangefinders on the 
main superstructure. Then down to step eight, and we're putting together some of the ship's boats. These are multi-part small ship's boats, very nicely detailed, using a bit of photo edge. And we'll start building the funnel. And basically we put all that together here. Um, and it looks very nicely detailed, and it's hollow molded, um, so it's nice detail. Uh, down to step nine, basically putting the funnel onto the platform it sits on, adding a whole heap of anti-aircraft guns. Um, in this step, it does say that what it calls a verification dispute here, and gives you a couple of items to put in place. Basically, it sounds like nobody's too sure exactly what item was fitted in a certain spot, so they're giving you both options. And then on step 10, we're adding the um, ship's boats around the main funnel and the supports that they sat on. And then on to step 11, and basically we'll put the whole forward superstructure onto the, onto the ship. And then in step 12, we're starting on the, should we say, the aft end of the superstructure with the topmost rear range finder going into place. Step 13 is basically the part where you put together in step 12 that goes on to a larger superstructure part and we build another more superstructure in front of it and adding quite a lot of small details in there, ships, boats and there's also a correction here as well where they say they've updated a part number. Then on to step 14, um, put together the final uh, turret, this will be the, mo the aftmost one, ship's crane, building the uh, the aft mast as well, putting all that together. And that's in the kit in pretty fine plastic. Step 15, put all those parts onto the, uh, onto the rear of the hull. And then step 16, the very last one, put the rearmost uh, main turret in place and some small details at the uh, at the rear of the ship aft on the ship and then um, we do also have a couple of Arado 196s and so you can put those together you can make those with wings extended or wings folded so paints and decals the paints are called out by name Mr Hobby, Tamiya and White Ensign um, they're quite clearly labelled and laid out. You get ports, starboard and above views of the ship. Um, she does have a camouflage pattern on the hull and the superstructure. You're also given a couple of masking sheets to spray the uh, swastikas on the forward and aft end of the ships. Uh, you can use the masks for the, uh, the red part of the, the background and the white circle. Uh, the decals come in, they supply the decals for the swastikas. All swastikas in the kit are made from at least two parts. Uh, those on the main deck from several parts. You get decals for um, the Aldo 196, ships and signs as well. And the decals look pretty neat, although some of them are pretty tiny. So an overall conclusion, we're long overdue for a new Scharnhorst and Maser now. And this will supply them, it's easily most uh, detailed kit on the market right now up to Flyhawk's usual standards and with that comes several hundred small parts and a fair bit of work so you'll need your magnifiers. Other than that it's going to build into an impressive kit and many thanks for Flyhawk for sending it along for us to have a look at.